Hello, my crafty friend, and thank you so much for tuning in to today's very special journal flip through video. So as per a few requests, I'm trying to no longer call these beautiful treasure books junk journals. The reason I kind of was in the habit of calling them that, despite the fact that, as you can see by the spine of this book here, they are literally made out of treasure, um, is that I learned to make books during the lockdowns, the 2020 lockdowns, um, and it was mainly tutorials for making junk journals. So journals out of old cereal boxes or flyers or junk mail envelopes and such. Um, but I have for a while now moved away from those kinds of recycled elements and started working more with fabrics and paints and crystals and coffee dyed paper and vintage books and these kinds of elements as you can see here. So up to this point in the video, if you're one of my regular viewers, you may have been feeling like you were having deja vu or something, and no, your eyes did not deceive you. The cover of this book is a cover that I used before. It sat in my shop for too long, unsold. So when my lovely friend Kimberly, she's one of my favorite friendstermers, you know, somebody who I met um, through my Etsy shop, but who I really value now, um, in fact, I film at my window and something gorgeous that Kimberly made that I would love to share with all of you. Look at how that beam of light is shining onto it. Yet she sent me a beautiful friend mail with quite a few really luscious fabric samples. Pieces that were, you know, that she wouldn't get around to using that I've definitely already used quite a few of them. And among that mail was that beautiful sacred geometry drawing that I was going to bind it into my own personal journal, but my Kenley, my man, he took one look at it and said, this belongs in the window. He just had a feeling that if it was on um, the west side of our house, then when that setting sunlight shines in, it would get kind of energized. So anyway, that's where that sits now. But yeah, Kimberly said that she, when she requested a custom journal, and we were kind of talking about different cover options. She mentioned how much she loves this one. So I suggested why not just do an updated version of this book. So if you saw the flip through for that journal, some of what you're about to see will look familiar, but I've also added in quite a few new special pieces just for Kimberly. So anyway, the first new addition that you'll see is that the bottom, of the book in the inside cover, I've made kind of a cool little slider pocket that holds an entire deck of angel message cards. So yeah, the fun thing is you can shuffle them right here in this little double pocket. I'm gonna do this idea again, by the way, with other types of Oracle decks. Let's see, what's our angel message for today? Feel the power of the angels and let it carry you through life. Isn't that a beautiful one? And look, there's a little butterfly in the angel's hand. That's a really cool one. So anyhow, I felt like Kimberly can pull an angel card whenever she opens her book. This top piece is also a pocket. And I've put in a beautiful picture of the Annunciation out of an art history textbook just because the angel is so gorgeous. And of course, our theme for today's journal, we have kind of a, a triple whammy of a theme, just angels, crystals, spirituality. And those are my own personal favorite themes. So it's nice to work with them. I've put in lots of blank pages and by blank pages, I mean pages from vintage books that can be used as backdrops for collaging or Kimberly can write in the blank areas. And pardon my voice, I'm getting over a, whammer, a whammer of a cold. Um, and so today's video might be a little bit shorter than my usual videos just because of that. Look at this pretty paper that Cat Stone gifted to me. I turned it into just the littlest, littlest um, notebook in here. A couple hearts cut out from 
Isn't it fun, the shadow play? That's the nice thing about standing next to a window. The unfortunate thing is the glare, but the fortunate thing is you get some really cool shadow effects on your ephemera. Anyway, this is a postcard printable from my Etsy shop, um, Lourdes Postcards, and just stunning. So I print, they print out like this so that you can fold them over and glue them shut like the original, but instead of folding it over and gluing it shut, I decided to ink the edges and turn it into a little writing booklet. And these are from Tailor Made Journals, that really cool Age of Enlightenment kit. This is paper from May. Really beautiful kimono. Anyhow, like I said, my, my voice, although my voice is back, so to speak, I love this paper from May. And, oops, try to stay in frame here. The angel here is something Kenley made using polymer clay, putting it into a mold. I was crafting one day and he asked if there was anything he could do to help. And I said, why don't you just make me a big bunch of these little angels? And he sure did. <laughs> And this is one of the stickers I made during my 12 Days of Gifts to Make video series. Oh, and this one. So I forgot to close it. This is one of the pages from the original book that was in this, this particular book uh, cover. And I decided I wanted to make these cupboards closable, but I didn't want to use just a magnet like I typically do. So I found a couple of really pretty... Uh, costume jewelry flowers with the same color scheme as the cupboard doors here. The light sort of chartreuse with the little pretty blue, somewhere between a robin's egg blue or a, or a turquoisey blue. But anyway, I created a closure, a string closure for the cupboard doors, and I think it's pretty cute, if I dare say so myself. Oops. And of course it gets a little bit stuck when I'm trying to demonstrate. I might replace this with a better string or Kimberly might choose to do that. Anyway, <laughs> these magical cupboard doors open up to a land, like a fairy land, like a sort of a Narnia. And I think it's just beautiful having this vintage picture of a fairy greet us. And yeah, I decided to use these to hold an entire deck of crystal oracle cards this time. Ooh, I didn't even do this on purpose, but one of my very favorite stones, Larimar, with the message, the earth's elements of the sea and the sky, look at that, are taking you to new levels. You have the blessings of the angels at your side. <gasps> Kimberly, I'm getting chills. So the fact that her theme for the book is crystal healing and angels and spirituality like that. The fact that the crystal card that comes from a fairy says the blessings of the angels are at your side. It's kind of like all three summed up right here just in these pages. So cool. Anyway, each one is different. You might want to pause the video and read whatever I'm pointing to at that particular moment. That could be a little message for you. I won't read all of them. I'll just give you a few little, yeah, little teaser there. But, yeah, like I said, normally if my voice were feeling good, I would be doing a full-on reading and pulling three cards from the angel cards in the front and three cards from these here and reading all of them out loud because that's how I like to do these things. But the more I talk, the more I feel like I have to cough. And I just don't want to cough on camera and I don't edit my videos. <laughs> so I'm trying to get it all in. I promise next week I'll be back to form this beautiful painting cherub by the paper cameo. I left this envelope blank inside so that it can be used for the writing space or drawing space or coloring space. But voila! <laughs> the most magnificent jeans I've ever seen in my life, unless these are boots that they're tucked into, but this beautiful bookmark here that can also be like a journaling card or a message inside this envelope was painted, of course, by 
the one and only Cat Stone, who has blessed my life with the most magical paper dolls ever. And in my late 30s, she's made me into somebody who loves to play with paper dolls, which is just a wonderful little surprise, isn't it? So the doll of my dear friend, Jason Adams. Hi, Jason. I love you if you're watching this. Um, the paper doll of my boyfriend, Kenley. Won't even bother saying hi to him. I know he won't watch this far. <laughs> and I stand corrected if you do, babe. Love you too. Um, but anyway, all the paper dolls I've created are inspired by Cat Stone's paper dolls. And I just wanted to tuck one in there for Kimberly to play with or maybe to pass to her granddaughter. These are just great backdrops for collages, wallpapers. This is out of an art history textbook. And I included it just because of the angel up top here that kind of wraps around to create a pocket. So these pages out of that art history textbook did not have the kind of art I felt comfortable putting out there into the world. And so I did something new that I think I'm going to start doing more often because I absolutely love how it turned out. I just randomly collaged down backdrop pages. And like I said, what I consider to be backdrop pages are book pages in other languages, music paper, yellowed, crumbling, old antique paper, and so on. So it's just a beautiful collage of all of those. And I love the way the different shades of neutrals are overlapping each other. So Kimberly could either glue photos down onto here or build up a larger collage um, or just write in the spaces where there aren't any words already. There's a lot she could do with it. And I also included for her the front page of that copy of Ivanhoe, I think, that I've used for some of the collaging in here, just because it's cute too. John from Billy and Harry, Christmas 1930. And it also includes another page here that was too pretty to collage down because of that adorable little illustration. So yeah, because I know she's also an artist, I deliberately left some white space and more blank space than I might normally do, since I know she will fill it all up. This pretty little earring charm. Vintage, so those are vintage little sequins. Can you see what I'm talking about? There we go. Sorry, it's hard to get the camera angle just right. Um, so yeah, here we go. <laughs> now it's getting to something I'm excited to share. I didn't cut these parts out, but I'll do that off camera. These lovelies are prints that I made of the, um, pardon me, I felt like I had to suppress a coffee and I'm just gonna sip some water. Look at the pretty fairy while I sip some water. And no, this isn't a ventriloquist act. <laughs> okay. And so these are prints that I made of the Lalique brooches that I painted reproductions of for Jason Adams for the Jason Journal. So I did take some photos of each one before I sent him his journal. And using those photos, I created a printable kit. <laughs> and I sing it like Oprah because, oh my goodness, Everyone who orders a journal from me from now on, it's going to be, you get a Lalique brooch and you get a Lalique brooch because they just look so cool, um, in my opinion. Like, for example, where there's a, where there's a little wheel glued down here, imagine having that little butterfly glued down there on that belly button, belly button, belly band. <laughs> See, I'm too excited. I'm forgetting my words on that belly band down there. Um, but anyway, I left them unglued on purpose so that she can write little messages on them perhaps, or glue them where she'd rather have them. Um, Kimberly, don't buy that kit. <laughs> don't buy it. I'm sending it to you as a gift with purchase of this journal too. Um, but for the rest of you, I'll price it very, very moderately, um, just to have it out there. But yeah, if you if you buy the kit, um, it's going to include both files for, here we go. And now I'm getting distracted while I'm talking to you. 
I know I copied extras so I could show them. Here we go. Okay. There's a, a PDF file that looks like this. And so on one page, you get this beautiful, like, butterfly fairy. I've used, by the way, washi tape circles, if you're wondering how I keep lifting them up and setting them back down again. I decided to go with, so Kimberly, um, you can actually uncurl these little tape balls and use this beautiful decorative butterfly washi tape. So that's a little extra surprise that I'm glad I remembered to show you because those could have easily been tossed in the bin without a second thought. But yeah, I used decorative washi tape on purpose. So anyway, um, the printable kit, it includes a PDF file that shows the butterflies to this scale. So twice the size that I printed them at. And all I did was print them um, under the print options, when it says copies per page, I chose two copies per page. And that way you get two in the half size rather than four, as rather than, sorry, a single one in the jumbo size. Um, but I think they're just adorable. You could print them out on like a cardstock paper and use them as postcards. For example, print four copies per page, and then you'd have a postcard of this. They're pretty finicky to fussy cut. Like, I'm not going to lie to you and say this was easy. Um, thanks to some really wonderful spring-loaded scissors Cat Stone gave me, it's a little bit easier for me to fussy cut stuff than it used to be. But, um, yeah, they get pretty complicated, especially this Medusa headdress of a brooch piece. But anyway, yeah, I'll put those in my Etsy shop today. I'm thinking... Um, I'm going to price them at $2.22. Um, and yeah, you get the PDF and you also get um, just the stickers, the digital stickers. So you can drag them and drop them onto ledger pages or, you know, use them in paint program, change the colors, play with them a little bit, have fun with them. All I ask is that if you do use them in a project that you're sharing publicly, like, for example, you're putting them on Instagram or YouTube or Facebook or somewhere. Um, just please do give me credit for painting these because they were a labor of love, but also a labor of quite a bit of time. And I would appreciate, um, yeah, I'd appreciate that. Thank you. Anyhow, speaking of ledger paper, 1960s ledger, some examples of sacred geometry, and crystals. And I'm one to talk, right? I've used printables from artists and I forget to name the Etsy shops, but this was a digi I found on Etsy. Um, I've, I'll, I'll put the links in the video description, I think. Yeah, and this is from um, Medieval Mirage in a digital kit called Boho uh, Bohemian Bazaar Volume 2. I remembered that one. Look at this cool angel. Anyway, see, here's where she could do another collage of those old book pages to write over. I just think, yeah, these old angel illustrations are so pretty. And here's why I wanted to include those pages. So remember how I said there are um, some of the pages in this book, the things on one side I had to collage over, but I wanted to use those pages. This is why. Look at this just celestial gathering angels up in clouds. Look at how the artist depicted the clouds in the Middle Ages. <laughs> like floating saucers or floating, ooh, maybe, maybe this artist saw some flying saucers or like floating sheets. It's kind of interesting. But yeah, I, if Kimberly, if you're like me, you could get lost in an image like this. I absolutely adore it. I almost kept it for myself, but then I thought, no, nope. <laughs> she deserves this. She has supported my shop so beautifully. Look, there's even a peacock here. If I ever find another copy of this image, I'll put it in the book for me because she's the other peacock lover. But yeah, I love how it goes into gardens and then in the background there are beautiful 
castle-like buildings on these hills. Of course, nowhere does it say the artist. Oh, yes, it does. Angels in Adoration, two fresco panels by Benetto Gazzoli. That's my guess. I'm not, <laughs> Italian names are not my forte. Give me the most complicated Sanskrit name and I can say it as if I've known it my whole life, but try to get me to read Italian and I have no idea. Anyway, for the Chapel of the Medici, Medici Riccardi Palace, Florence, 15th century. So there you go. It does give us the artist. Good thing I didn't collage over all of this. See, <laughs> sometimes it's useful to keep the words in the books. Please, God, don't let that be the quote that I'm known for in this lifetime. <laughs> Sometimes it's good to leave the words in the books. Priceless Wisdom by Crafter Sarah Landry. <laughs> that would be the saddest epitaph. Epithet? Epitaph? Anyway, thanks to the wonderful Jason Adams, I'm striving to no longer call myself a crafter, but to own the title of artist um why did i say it like that artist own the title of artist which is definitely definitely a, a high compliment so thank you jason for it by the way guys it, okay so if you're one of my regular viewers this is gilded look at that gold um if you've seen my video of the Jason journal, flipping through it and showing what I put inside. You can also check out uh, Jason's video, opening the journal, his first reaction upon seeing what I put together for him. It's just, if I ever start doubting myself as an artist, I'm going to watch that video again and again and again, because yeah, it's, definitely given me a lot of validation that I didn't even know I was craving until I got it. Um, but he so kindly said that I've surpassed craft and that my books are art. And, you know, to be fair, things like this, like a, a scrap bundle with a dyed doily tucked into a, a tuck spot, um, those are things that I've learned from other crafters on YouTube. So something like this I would consider craft, but I think when it comes into, you know, the hand-painted Lalique um, brooches or the way that I um, turn vintage things into printables and design them into other stuff, that, you know, I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take the art description. I just love this. As we are in just about cherry blossom season in Vancouver, I would guess. Back when I lived in Vancouver, cherry blossom season was my absolute favorite. Although this is the original cherry blossom season. Look at this cool postcard from Japan. Original. I love how par avion and then Chinese are stamped. And then airmail is written in by hand. So isn't it interesting that Japanese stamps show... The Japanese character and French rather than Japanese and English or at least back then they did but yeah I just love this one very beautiful picture and then this is a pocket as well as a cute little squirrely page and in that pocket I just put a cool little um, old map page this was actually in the original version You know, I might, you know what, Kimberly, I don't usually do this. I'm going to swap this out for a, a map of the entire world from an antique book. And I'll give you another French thing. I'm just noticing this is showing in French Plateau de l'Iran, which is the Plateau of Iran. And I just know that Cat Stone would love to have a vintage map showing Iran from, boy, I don't remember the date on this. So I never usually do something like that, but I'm going to, I'll make it up to you. I'm, I'm swapping this out for something to put in Kat's book. Um, meanwhile, there's a little flower of life, seed of life pendant that I'm going to add as a dangle on this page here, just because it's such a beautifully heavy page. And look at the way it's been embossed. This page was from the late and wonderful Sally. So 
Mary Lynn, if you're watching. Funny how she brought her presents into two videos, didn't she? Because yet yeah, this was a just a gorgeous um, gift bag that my Auntie Mary Lynn's uh, late mother-in-law gave us. And I used one piece of it in my personal journal and I put the other piece of it in this gorgeous journal. And it's just all the colors that I know Kimberly loves and that I love and that are just vibrant and beautiful. The camera's not really picking up all the details, but there's really cool, there it is, like turquoisey color on that navy. There we go. I'm trying to, isn't it funny? I'm trying to go quickly because my throat's a little bit sore today. And then, of course, I keep finding things I want to explain and explain and over-explain. So, I will just kind of pull things out and show them to you as I flip. Just like the ladies who do voiceovers do, only this lady doesn't edit her videos, and that's why you get the mistakes and everything. <laughs> Indian temples. This is a really fun playing card. These were from Cat Stone. I have to keep all the court cards for my own journals because they've got really cool paintings for the kings and the queens. Ooh, 10 hearts. For some reason, <laughs> that stuck out to me as an auspicious one. Here's another one of my, so you can see how this one looks at half size scale. Obviously, the bigger you print them, the blurrier the images are going to look. Um, not, not too bad though, but yeah, the smaller ones look super crisp and just, wouldn't it be nice to hold this real, <laughs> the real thing with the opals and the green gold? It's just fun. Mind you, I am more of a yellow gold girl myself, but one of the things that kind of challenged me when I reproduced these Lalique brooches was that Lalique um, used gold almost the way an artist would use paint. And that's what made them easy to do in paint. Um, but he didn't stick to a typical um, gold, white gold, rose gold, gold scheme, color scheme. He included green golds and orangey golds and reddish golds. And so you can't, you can kind of see it. I don't know why I'm going like this. It's not shiny. This is just straight from the printer. Um, but in the originals that I gifted to Jason, you can see um, I mixed those paints myself by adding just a, t a tad bit of yellow and blue to my gold paint. And it got exactly the green I was going for. So the very talented uh, Deborah painted these. Thank you so much again for sending the printable files. I turned this cute little angel illustration. Cute is too dismissive of a word. She's pensive looking, meditative looking, and just turned her into a cute little journaling spot though. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I was trying not to do that this whole time. And there it is. But yeah, just some little papers to do um, collages on perhaps. And lots of pocket space where she can tuck in her own things, too, if she chooses. Yeah, I tried to make this one filled with space to be journaled on. I love how these coins... So remember those that double page spread that showed all those angels in the front half of the book? It also had something pretty cool in this half. Or are we still in the front half? Maybe we are. <laughs> love that vintage fabric here we are yet yeah, we're at the middle okay so there was another double page spread so I've printed some of the full size pages from the paper cameo and then just backed them with these pretty prints from oh another digital artist there's so many now I would love to just use my own printables I just have to find the time to design my own set of printables so I can use only my own. 
This I photocopied from a book that my Auntie Mary Lynn gave me. Okay, I have to tell a story here. <clears throat> and I'm not doing that for effect. I'm doing it for necessity. I'm so sorry for people who hate the sound of water sips and throat clears. Um, what am I saying? People like that tuned out a long time ago from this video. So my Auntie Mary Lynn gave me a video. I'm going to do something rude and walk away and grab the book she gave me. So, yeah, thank you so much, Mary Lynn. She gave me this book. She found it at an antique store, I think in Edmonton. And it's a technical college book. So you can see class 24, somebody wrote in all their class information from 1938. And it's really neat. It's got a class schedule that someone wrote. So Mary Lynn knows what kind of ephemera I love. But it's all about technical schematic drawing. And so it shows all these cool diagrams and cool geometry, letters and such. So if someone's going into, oh, just love that. But um, yeah, I flipped it to a random page that happened to be this one to make a print for Kimberly thinking, yeah, I bet she would love one of the pages out of this book. And I, I can't turn it into printables yet because it's 1938, so it's not yet, it hasn't yet reached the, um, the date at which it becomes public domain. But when it does, I'm going to turn that whole thing into a printable book because it's cool. Anyway, the fact that I chose this one is really, really exciting to me because not only does it show... A beautiful spiral kind of like in a nautilus shell similar to the golden ratio or the golden mean maybe that is what this is um, but it's giving the scale 9 inch by 12 inch and 9 times 12 equals 108 and the number of enlightenment and I didn't notice that at first when I flipped it to this page and thought oh yeah that looks cool she'll like it and printed it um, I noticed it after I put it into the book, and it sparked a flashback for me to a dream that I had back when I lived in Vancouver, that I was lying in my bed looking up at my ceiling, and instead of seeing my typical ceiling in this dream, um, I saw like a light fixture that was incredibly ornate like a glass sculpture made out of like glass undulating beautiful shining snakes it was so cool like yeah imagine like Lalique style snakes like not scary things but beautiful ornate looking things um and although it was like a sculpture they were moving so in the dream I started wondering like how many snakes are there and I was able to count them and there were nine snakes. And then I noticed each, each snake's body was kind of um, joined, like exactly like how these are joined. Ooh, I'm getting chills. It's the time to think about this, I guess. See how there's like bejeweled joinings that are holding the snakes together. Well, in my dream, everywhere where the snake's bodies would twist or turn a little bit, there was like a little ornate knob. Um, of some sort and I counted those and there were 12 of them and I made a mental note like interesting 9 by 12 9 by 12 like I'll remember that when I wake up because I knew I was dreaming and of course when I woke up I wrote down in my little dream journal all about it and then I jotted down 9 times 12 and then um, notice that that also looks like an equation and so when you calculate it yeah 9 times 12 is 108. Oh, sorry, Kimberly, we got a little, we almost lost our Pompeian woman. But yeah, these two just good collage back backdrops anyway, so that's okay. But yeah, I thought that was kind of interesting that I haven't thought about that dream in years, but it was one of those cool dreams that, you know, was worthy of noting at the time. Sears wallpaper sample from 1928. 19 and a half cents for a roll. But I just thought these are so cute. 
I love these pastel illustrations. It almost looks like somebody took crayons and colored the wallpaper. And then this was in an old Dutch book. It just looks very beautiful. A woman in traditional Eastern European clothing, reading a book. Great journaling space on the back. Lord Vishnu, maintaining the universe. A really cool man pulling a cart. The chrysanthemum in the sky. Funny how, oh, that says Betty Crocker. I guess I coffee dyed this in my, <laughs> in my cookie pan. This is one of my own abstract drawings, just blown up to a larger scale. In this pocket, we've got a card full of crystals and I left it raw Kimberly so that you can decide whether you want to cut them out to use them as little journaling cards or maybe use this in another way. And also a big bunch of these pages from 1912. So Kimberly, this is kind of like my, um, my precious gift to you with the purchase of this journal is the largest stack I've ever given out um, of these pages of numbers from 1912 from France. And they're just mathematical conversion scales from, say, cubic into metric, how many of these and those, how many of those and these, and so on. And it's cool how there's actual little notes taken here and there throughout this book. But yeah, I thought you and your granddaughter might have some fun with some truly antique collage pages. Lots of space to write, draw, collage in here. This is one of my favorite little materials. I, sa I still have one tiny little bit that I kept for myself, but Kenley and I used to go for walks in a park by my old house, and we would find the most magical things there, including little paper fairies that I've shown in many videos um, that I found when we went back after the move, actually. But we'd find beads and jewelry. And yeah, one day we found this thing of really cool white wedding lace. And I coffee dyed it and used it in journals. And this page, as humble as it might be, this is my favorite in the whole book. I love this tiny little doily. I bought this at a sidewalk sale um, in front of one of my old neighbor's houses. That neighbor's parents used to own a fabric shop, so I bought a bag of these, but this was the only one shaped like a little star. And then on the bottom of this page, my favorite stamp, Kimberly, I almost steamed this off to keep it, <laughs> but then I decided, no, that would be mean. <laughs> I didn't replace it with a lesser stamp. It's there for you. Look at that cool observatory stamp. I love the way it's been drawn. I just love it. Anyway, modern wallpaper sample. The other side of the most beautiful gift bag ever. And then, yeah, the, the majority of the book from here. Ooh, other than that cool Medusa. That, yeah, you know exactly where she comes from. But yeah, from here, it's mostly just the other sides of all the papers that you saw in the front half of the book. So yeah, a lot of paintings that you may choose to keep or cover as you prefer, um, but they're just in here because the things on the front were so cool. I love this. It's a little bit funny, right? His and hers, his and hers, um, what would you call it, loin leaves? Just the way they're covering them up so strategically. Yeah, I put this page in for this angel here. And she's gorgeous. She may not be an angel or a crystal, but she is beautiful. <laughs> so yeah, when we do a theme, we don't have to stick to it too um, obsessively. This is really fragile paper, but it looks really good as a pocket. And then this little girl hugging her puppy dog is authentic to the 18... 80s. And then in here, there is a time fairy. Oh, so this has a story to it too. 
My favorite, favorite thing that Jason Adams said about the journal I made for him is that it had an element of time travel to it. And that is exactly what I go for in all of my art, whether it's the journals or my abstract paintings and drawings that I have yet to show more fully on this channel. But whatever I make, my goal is always to communicate something that I would want future generations to hear or to see. Um, I don't ever want to put something out there into the world, whether it's, you know, a YouTube video or an Instagram post or what. I wouldn't want to put anything out there into the world that I myself wouldn't want to encounter from somebody in the past. I don't know if I'm explaining that properly, but basically, like, I, I want to put things out there for future viewers to come across that will make their day a little bit better for having seen it. Things like a little magical woman folded up into an envelope. Um, things like coffee dyed paper with flowers dyed into them so beautiful that it feels, you know, like more than the sum of its parts. But anyway, so yeah, when I saw this little fairy, a cute little nature fairy holding a handful of pansies by Cat Stone, the way she overlapped it on this page of clocks with the words tick tock, tick tock around the clock, it just struck me as, okay, so this little fairy might have the power to do things like make sure you see your lucky numbers when you look at the clock or make sure that the car right in front of you has the numbers on its license plate that match up to your birthday or just something special like that. A little time fairy. Um, because one of the synchronicity things that I look for in my life is numerical synchronicities. So when I see the numbers 111 or 1111, it always just makes me feel like I'm in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. Um, so yeah, why not personify that and put a little fairy to it? <laughs> so here we go. These are one of my favorite pieces of ephemera to use. They're wine bottle labels that have an image of the goddess Diana on them. And I used to use them very sparingly. And then the other day, Kenley took me thrifting and I found three more packages of them. So woohoo, <laughs> I gave you a little stack of those, Kimberly. And Kat, you'll be getting a little stack of those too. But yeah, I put the wine labels on this side of the page while on the other, there's this cool black and white close up of Diana bathing and a blue bird of happiness and a little brown bird of happiness too, because <laughs> they come as a pair. Another angel that just looked so cool. But yeah, there we have it. At this point we are at the back of the book and I just stuck a couple fun things in here that she can use for her collaging, one of the neutral wallpapers. Um, but yeah, I think the last thing I'll show you and this is only really uh, necessary for Kimberly to see, but you're all welcome to watch. <laughs> this black string undoes, and then the whole journal that I put together for you here can be taken out, and you can tie another book in here instead, or you can add pages um, as you go, I'm not gonna fold these, but just as an example, you can put that in, it doesn't even have to be sewn. When you tie this around the center again, it's gonna hold it in place. And yeah, I got that idea from one of my favorite junk journal artists. Her channel is called Girl with a Butterfly. And she did tie shut, kind of removable, refillable journal centers too. And I just thought that was such a good idea because we are always growing, we're always expanding, we're always finding things that make us think, oh, that would go so nicely in my journal. So yeah, having something like this, you can also slip things in the center. But yeah, I just love this book so much, Kimberly. I hope you love it too. I know you will. What am I saying? I know you'll love it too. And yeah, thank you so much for watching, those of you who stuck with me till the end. And 
I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Ooh, you can find these printables in my Etsy shop. I'll put the link to that in the description. So much love to you. Bye for, oh, and the ring. <laughs> so this ring is just a beautiful imposter. <laughs> a stunning ring that I found out thrifting recently that just has such a cool classic line to it. Like, look at the way that stone is set so you can see the beauty from every side. And now I say stone, but I mean glass or whatever it is. But this was just such a fun looking ring that I thought it would go beautifully tied to the edge of this book for Kimberly. So there you go, Kimberly, to use in your crafting or maybe, you know, Eliana might want to play with it too. <laughs> but it's just tied to the side there. So there we are. Thank you so much for watching. So much love to you. Bye for now.